Okay, we're here at Oak Park today to deal with spreading urea on tillage farms, particularly spreading it at wide, wide bout widths. But we, before we talk about spreading, I have Brendan Burke here with me, farm manager here in Oak Park. <laughs> Brendan, why are farmers, why are we moving towards urea on tillage farms this year? Well, first of all, it's a, it's a protected urea we're spreading on oilseed rape here. So it's a much cheaper product to spread per unit of, of nitrogen. So that's our main reason. And it's much more efficient to spread it as well. It's much more efficient that we get a lot of better work rate with a tractor and spreader that we're putting 100 kilograms of product on as against maybe putting 200 kilograms of, of other products. And Brendan, in the past, uh, tillage farmers used to be concerned about spreading unprotected urea because they, they were afraid in very dry conditions they get a, ammonia loss. Is that yeah. a concern with protected urea? Well, that's what that's it, it, it isn't as much on, on cereal as it is on grassland, but it is a better product to spread that way that you have uh, less, less issues with it, that the protected urea helps there. Yeah. When, when dealing with spreading urea, indeed in dealing with spreading any fertilizer product, it's a good thing to try and characterize the product. The one thing that's different with urea is that its density is lower than other fertilizers. And because of that, it'll throw differently from the, from the spreader. And it is a bit more of a challenge to throw in uh, windy conditions for sure and at wider bout widths. So we need to set the spreader carefully to do that. Most modern spreaders, you can set them for different fertilizers. You're talking about setting uh, either the veins using different discs, maybe different veins on it, and indeed getting a different uh, maybe setting for the veins themselves, the drop point of fertilizer onto the disc, maybe the angle of the spreader. But to do all of this, the first thing we have to do is actually characterize the fertilizer itself. And by that, we talk about uh, you know, the density of the fertilizer, but particularly the size distribution of the fertilizer. And that's done quite simply with a lot of different manufacturers today by using a simple sieve box like this where we put a sample of the fertilizer into one part of the box here we then actually shake the, the, the sieve box here and this then allows it to separate into the different size categories so on this particular fertilizer here which is a protected urea product it is going into basically two different size categories here so we can see that there's roughly 50-50 distribution, 50% 50 in this middle size category and 50% in this category here. Once we have that information then, and we have information on density and the shape of the granules, we can use the, manuf the spreader manufacturer's resources. In other words, they have tested huge amount of products themselves indoors in test halls, and they have the settings for those products. What we're doing here is using these simple tests and characterization to match this product that we're spreading here to something in their database. And that's normally done now, nowadays through a phone app or it can be done online. So we can go online, match this with the manufacturer's product, our database, and from that find a setting that gives us the right veins for the spreader, the right drop point, uh, the right angle of the spreader. That depends on the manufacturer what you're looking for, but it gives us the parameters that we need to set to ensure we can spread this, this product at the required bout width. Okay, so when we have the information from our sieve box test on that, we go into a, uh, typically a phone app or something like that to get the actual uh, setting. Setting. So in this case, uh, we pick fertilizer analysis because that's what we have. We input that. So we go into the fertilizer analysis. Here it's asking us to describe the fertilizer. So in this case, though, that's granular urea and, and they're quite smooth granules. So we select the granular smooth in this case. So this has given us a representation of that sieve box that we had. And if we then we can actually enter the data here. So we had 50% of it in this particular size category and we had 50% of it in the next category. So that's the size distribution we had. Okay, so we proceed on to the next one here. It then asks us for the density. It's a urea product. So we can enter something in the region of 0.8 of a kilo uh, per litre, that's what it weighs, so it's less dense than other products. And the other test it asked us here, which we did earlier, was a strength test, which in this case, it was a five kilogram uh, force that broke the particle, so we entered the strength test. And then we go search. So what it's doing is, we inputted the data here, and it's showing us what they're matching that with in the database. And as you can see, it's a very, very close match. Uh, we have 50-50 in these two size categories, uh, whereas here in the match, it's very, very close to that. Density is the same, strength is very similar. So that is a good, uh, a good, a good match. We accept that then as a match. Uh, we select then our working width, which in this case is 24 meters with this product, and it allows us to, to spread the product at 24. If it, if it deemed that we couldn't, it wouldn't give us that option. 
and then it gives us the actual sp spread chart information here right so this tells us to working with 24 meters the most important thing that we have here first is the actual vein size which is an e an e6 vein so that's what we need to spread here and in this particular spreader it shows us the actual matching uh, the actual degree tilt on the hopper that we that that we need to use with, with this particular product as well uh, which is a six degree tilt so that's what we use for 24 meters on this product Okay, Brendan, we've got, the, we've got the settings from the phone app. What yep. did it mean in this case when we were spreading urea 24 meters on this machine? What do we change So first? what they mean here is this is our normal uh, spreading vein here, which would have spread our can at 24 meters, which is an E2. So now we're going to change onto an E6 vein, and then that will effectively get our 24 meters with the protected urea uh, comfortably. Okay. And while we're here at the back of the spreader, in terms of spreading height, yeah, we have that set as well. Now, it has to be tilted, uh, as the app said, so we've tilted six degrees at the front, and then we'll get the proper height then for this spreader over the, over the crop then. As okay, well. so in the case of the bog ball, the key, the, the key points here are the correct vein for the product at the correct distance, yes. and the tilt the angle, tilt. the angle actually angle. of the So of it's, this, it's shortening the top link, or lengthening, but it's shortening in this case, and the six degrees of a tilt forward on it, so the disc effectively are toying yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and just to say that those are based on the particular quality that of product, fertilizer, yeah. that particular product. Yeah. So all ureas are not the same. No. So again, it's important to go through that procedure go for that the procedure to see the point of work. A similar product vein. could give you no tilt or a, an, an extra tilt. So it's, that's where you want to be looking at. And these veins are important though, because the traditional ones we had on at the E2s won't reach the 24 meters with that product. They might with another product, but they won't with that product. Okay. Anyway. And it's important too, just to say that, you know, this, this will vary with different spreader, manu with different manufacturers. On some other spreaders, it might be the position of the vein, the vein has yes. changed a lot and indeed on other ones it's the drop point of fertilizer or it might be a combination of them on those. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. as, as a further measure to ensure accuracy some manufacturers some of the spreader manufacturers will suggest doing actual tray testing or an element of tray testing. Brendan you set out a few trays yes, here today. We set out uh, across the full 24 meters here so when Mick is driving he go up and pass and cover the two full set of trays then and should have an even spread across them because it's not just good enough to have visual on the ground that it won't necessarily be back in the in the previous track so we're going to use the trays to balance them out. So in these trays these trays then the fertilizer can be put in test tubes test and tube look at visually. And balance it with a full even yeah. spread over the full width because yeah. it, visually you won't notice that on the ground or on the crop what, what you're looking at. Okay yeah. yeah so that's a good way of kind of verifying that the settings are correct. So Really, in summary, with urea, you have to be conscious that it is a different product. Uh, the main difference with the, compared to ordinary fertilizers is density is lower. It is more difficult to throw and particularly to throw to distances. And because of that, we need to set the fertilizer spreader uh, very accurately. And the way to do that is to use the manufacturer's resources because the, all of the big manufacturers have testing halls where they go through a huge amount of product to get the correct setting for their particular spreader with a particular product. So what we really need to do is match that by trying to by either characterizing our fertilizer or in some cases the actual fertilizer might be there in the fertilizer test database but we need to match that to get the correct settings for our particular spreader and those settings vary depending on the machine type but it is important to verify that your product you know the physical characteristics of the product and to get the right setting for that for the spreader and finally just to say even with that we need to be a bit more cautious with urea in windy conditions it will be more sensitive to wind particularly if you're at wide bout widths